Hello, am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Has everyone arrived there? Or do we have to wait for somebody else? Please reply. Anybody? Has everyone arrived here? Okay. One minute. All right. So we'll be doing uh, work energy theorem and uh, questions related to it, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can anyone just please explain to you what is work energy theorem? Anyone? Kapya? Arvind, throw it. Sir, W work is equal to delta K E kinetic energy. Change right. in kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy is equal to work done. That's correct. Yes. Sir. Can we also say that change in potential energy is equal to work done? Because change in kinetic energy will be equal to the change in potential energy. I'm just waiting for getting me the host because I'm not able to share my screen. Just give me one minute.
Yeah. Now I got the connection. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Sir. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good, good. Sorry for the delay. There was some network problem from the center. Basically, uh, I was not getting the host. Uh, host. Okay. All right. We'll be solving some questions related to the work energy theorem. As you said, that work energy relates the change in kinetic energy or the change in potential energy with the work done, right? Whatever change in energy you have done, that is due to the work what you have done, isn't it? When you work, so your energy gets consumed or when somebody works on you, you get energy of it. Are you getting my point? Right? So whenever we say that, whenever we say that, there's some change in kinetic energy. Let us say that kinetic energy, okay, uh, you tell me which one is the graph of kinetic energy and which one is the graph of potential energy? This is graph one, this is graph two. Anybody answer this? Which one is the graph of kinetic energy? Which one is the graph of potential energy? Hmm? Answer this. Sir, inverted parabola is uh, kinetic energy. Inverted parabola. The second one. Ah, yes, sir. All right. So basically, basically, see here. This is total energy line. That is kinetic energy plus potential energy. This is potential energy line and this is kinetic energy line, right? So whenever you get at any point, okay, so kinetic energy and this is the potential energy at the same point. So when you add both of them, you get the total energy. So whatever change in kinetic energy, the same will be the change in potential energy. Are you getting my point? Right? Yes. Okay. So the first question. First question. This was like a little bit basic. I was just asked to solve questions for you. So first let us have the questions based on the spring part. Okay. Spring part. Um, okay. So question says that two springs, two springs have force constant. have force constant k1 and k2 two springs have force constant k1 and k2 where k1 is greater than k2 have you learned about the spring cost the spring condition energy in spring if you have learned about it yes or no yeah, most of you just started <laughs> You started about uh, what emphasis? Okay, this about the springs you haven't done yet, now. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm just writing this question and I'll give you the basic idea with, uh, behind that and then we'll be solving more questions. So, question says that on which on which spring is more work done? Spring is more work done. More work done. One. If they are, if they are stretched, if they are stretched by the same force, by same force, and second one, they are stretched by same amount. They are stretched by same amount, like same displacement has been given. So I'm just moving on to the next page. Basic thing about the spring is C. The basic concept behind the spring is, let us say this is a spring, okay? And this is uh, this is having a spring constant K, okay? That is the stiffness constant. Based on this, we uh, get to know that whether the spring will be moving more or moving less by applying certain force, okay? So for example, we apply a force this way, okay? And this will be stretched, right? This will be stretched. So there will be a backward force generated on the spring, okay? That will be the resisting force. That spring generates itself. And that force, how much force will be generated? That depends on the value of K. And two things. That also depends on how much displacement you have created. How much displacement you have created. So that force is directly proportional to the displacement. 
If you have created a large displacement, that force will be large. If you have created a less displacement, yeah, that force will be less. Got it? Right? So that force, when you when we remove the cost, uh, proportionality and we add a constant of proportionality, that is x, uh, sorry, uh, k. Okay. Now the thing is that when you provide the, why this negative sign, this negative sign occurs here because when you provide the displacement in the rightward direction, the force that is the resisting force that will be generated in the opposite direction to restore its condition. That is one of it, right? And the energy that is present inside the spring in stretch condition is half k x square. This is the energy that is present inside the spring in stress condition. If x displacement has been given to the string, the energy inside it will be half k x square. All right. Say yes or no. Did you understand till here? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So next thing that we have to do is, uh, okay, let us uh, get back to this, uh, our uh, previous question that was there. So first of all, we got to know that force is directly proportional to the amount of displacement you have given and uh, kinetic energy, sorry, energy is stored in the spring when you uh, stretch it to a distance X is half K X square, right? Two things are there. So our previous question was, our previous question was this. Previous question says that if they are stressed by the same force, First condition, two springs have spring constant K1 and K2. So on what, uh, which one we have to do the more work done. So more work done is half KX square. Okay. Change in energy is work done. Initially, no displacement was there. So initially it was zero. Finally, this, this much displacement has been given. So finally, the energy is half KX square. So change in energy is equals to work done. Neglecting the sign that is half KX square is the work done. Do you agree or not with this? Yes, sir. Right, everyone, everyone. Tell me, do you agree with this or not? Yes, sir. No displacement, no displacement, no energy. Finally, we displace with some amount x, x1, let us say k1, x1 square. I'm just generalizing it, kx square. So finally, the energy was half kx square. So change in energy is work done. So I just wrote that work done as half kx square, neglecting the negative sign. Okay. Now, in the first case, they are asking that uh, if we stretch them with the same force, so work done in one will be half k x square, k1 x1 square. Force does not come here. Work done in 2 is half k2 x2 square. How will include the force? So the force that is produced inside the spring is nothing but k into x. Agree? Yes, sir. Right? So we, we don't know about the displacement in the first condition. How much displacement has been provided that we don't know. So we can replace this displacement term from here as F by X, F by K, right? Yes or no? We are being so lazy. Yes. Big week. Yes or no? So if we, dis uh, if we replace it here, so it will be half K1 times instead of X1, I'm writing F, F uh, by K1 whole square. And in the second term, I'm writing L half K2 and F by K2 whole square. In both cases, I've written F only because this says that they have applied the same force. Right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Good. So if I divide them, W, uh, okay, let me simplify it further. So it will be a uh, half K1 f square by k, k1 square and this one will be half k2 f square by k2 square. So in that case, it will be half f square by k1 and here it will be half f square by k2. Agree or not? Yes, sir. Everyone write this. I need to change the page. Do it fast. And I think that you did not have your lunch, is it? At your time, I was full of my energy. Or the thing maybe that you don't like physics. Be responsive. Everyone. 
write it down quickly. Okay, I have taught you guys earlier also. I know many one of you. Chitesh, Vandana, Rethika, Rohit also. All right. Written? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm waiting for one more minute. <laughs> Rest of you, Sweta, then Raghav, Kirtana, Kavya, respond. Yes, sir. I think I can. Good. And ask questions. Because if you don't ask questions here, it will be difficult for you in your exams. Written? Shall I change the page? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. All right. So we had the first equation. I'm um, just switching from here. So we had the first equation. W1 was nothing but half into F square by K1, and W2 was half into F square by K2. Right? Can you tell me which one is greater? Have you written the question? Every one of you? Yes, sir. So can you tell me by this relation which one is greater? Is W1 greater or W2 greater? Think and tell me. Sir, W2. W2 is greater. Why? Sir, because K1 is greater than K2. Exactly. Very good. Who said that? Vandana. Good, good. So we can see here that work done is directly proportional to the force, point number one, and work done is inversely proportional to the spring constant. Okay. So when we divide them, when we divide them, W1 by W2, this half will get cancelled. So it will be uh, F square by F square in both the cases, F is same. And uh, this spring constant will be inversely added. So it will be K2 by K1. Sorry. K2 by K1, right? So this will be getting cancelled. So W1 by W2 is nothing but K2 by K1. And in the question, it says that K1 is greater than K2. This is the denominator is greater. So if denominator is greater, then this, the, this value is less than 1. This value is less than 1. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So W1 by W2 is less than 1 or we can say that W1 is less than W2. Point number 1. The second question says that in our second case, they are stressed by the same amount. So in the second part of the question, W1 is half K1 X square and W2 is nothing but half K2 X square. Right? In both the cases, the displacement X is same. So W1 by W2 is equals to K1 by K2 now. No, no need of replacements. And again, we know that K1 is greater than K2. So here W1 will be greater than W. Say yes or no. Any doubt here? No doubt. <laughs> right? Write it down. Written. Tell me when it is done. Written, sir. All right, all right. I 
everyone shall we change the page one minute sir yes sir everyone done shall i change the page yes sir All right. good so next question says that i'm giving an easy one next question says that um a ball of mass a ball of mass m is dropped a ball of mass m is dropped from a height h from a height h right on a platform on a platform fixed at the top of a vertical spring fixed at the top of a vertical spring write the question with me okay as shown in figure i'll draw the figure as shown in figure the platform the platform is depressed is depressed by a distance x by a distance x you have to find the spring constant find the spring constant okay so the condition is like this we have a platform that is mounted on the top of a spring spring is uh, like tied to a rigid base and above that at a height h we have a ball okay that falls down and when it falls down okay the spring okay sorry it should be like this the spring get depressed okay by an amount x right so this mass is m and you have to find the spring constant k in terms of x and m so whatever data has been given to you in the question you always you have to answer in those terms you don't have to assume any data yourself and then answer okay you have to either you have to replace them with the data is given in the question that is all this compute the uh, energy okay first what is the energy that you can see what energy is first you tell me what kind of energies can you relate here tell me kinetic energy kinetic energy do you think so potential energy potential energy is there because we are not talking about the velocities anywhere so i don't think that we can relate kinetic energy here okay potential energy and why potential energy kavya how so, do you come to uh, potential energy uh, as it's falling from a height it's potential exactly this is what you have to think this is the thinking process so you can see that that there is some decrement in height okay and the potential energy is directly related to the height problems okay so one thing is this second how can you relate the second what potential was there decrease in potential energy or increase in potential energy question number 2 go like this was there a decrease in potential energy or increase tell me decrease decrease in potential energy very good okay now so energies can neither be created nor be destroyed right energy yes, can either be created so in what form this potential energy got converted because there is a decrease in height you said that there is a decrease in potential energy that's correct so where did that potential energy go where it got converted it is easy think where it got converted Mm, I should have answered this. 
can you can't you see the spring the spring got depressed and it stored some energy isn't it whenever this displacement is there in the spring it stores some energy we learned it just now yes or no kinetic energy no no not kinetic energy that was the spring energy energy stored in the spring half k x square because due to this decrease in potential energy of the platform there was some decrease in height of the spring also and it stored some energy half k x square we just now studied now whenever there is a place the displacement in the spring didn't we study this whenever there is a displacement in the spring so it stores energy that is half k x square and same thing happened here due to this fall of wall the spring got displaced by x amount so it will store some kind of energy and who gave that energy potential energy gave that energy yes or no yes sir did you understand it? everyone yes sir vandana yes sir yes sir sir Good. yes sir Good. solve it then equate them find the value of k so what does work energy theorem says what statements that it says it says that Lost in potential energy will be equal to the gain in spring energy. Equate them. Tell me the answer. Sir, I got ten. Um... Yeah, tell me, tell me. Uh, mg into the height plus the displacement divided by displacement squared. You have all the terms. Ah, uh, h plus x by x squared. Is it this? Yes, sir. Little bit mistake is there. Sir, is it two into mg? Yeah, good right. It's two into mg. Now, what did you do? What was the total decrement in height? So, total decrement in height or total decrement in potential energy was, or I can say that loss in potential energy is equals to gain in spring energy. Okay, so it will be mg h plus x. This was the total decrement in height. The ball did not fall only. um h height it went for x height more so that was equals to half k x square from there you just have to calculate k 2 mg h plus x by x square understood or not everyone tell me yes sir every one of you yes sir i have i think 10, 10 people here so i need 10 yes yes sir yes or no yes sir good 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 Okay, let us go for the next question. Next question says that. Hmm. So we have a condition here. We have a condition here. Sir, I actually did it in a different way. Pardon, pardon. I actually did it in a different way. Go go on. Uh. So uh, I took uh, the difference in uh the energy as. Uh, Work done by the gravity uh, minus work done by the spring. So From see, you did the same thing. Okay. Like whenever we talk about change in energy, you can relate it with the work done. So whenever I say loss in potential energy, that was work done by the gravity, or gain in spring energy, that is work done on the spring, isn't it? Yes, sir. But instead of equating both of the sides here, I took it as minus. Equating both the things, I could not get. I could not hear you properly. Sir, instead of equating both of these, I subtracted one from the other. Instead of equating, you subtracted, right? Yes, sir. And then uh, you equated with zero. Ah, equated with zero. Ultimately, the same thing, na. If you write it like this, second half, and then you have to put a negative sign here because. This loss is equal to this gain. So if you equate that with zero, ultimately it will be coming here. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. 
same thing hai. that's what i told change in energy is equal to work done right so in the second next question that we have here uh we have a 4 kg block here 4 kg block is being provided with a 10 newton force and the spring constant is 24 newton per meter that is the unit spring constant okay so initially the block is at rest initially block is at rest right uh, spring unstretched spring is also unstretched okay surface frictionless frictionless surface i'm just writing the question in crisp sir what is the force constant Force constant, this this one. Ah, uh, what is it, sir? Twenty four or four. Sp spring constant is this force constant only. Whatever the spring constant oh, is, sir, is also the constant. value value. Twenty four newton per meter. Oh, okay. Twenty four newton per meter. So what you have to calculate? You have to calculate, calculate the speed of the block. Speed of the block. When this is a good question, it has moved by 0 0.5 meters. You have to calculate the speed of the block when it has moved by 0 0.5 meters. Now again, the same question. What kind of energies can you find it here? Tell me. Kinetic. Kinetic energy is there, good, because there's change in uh, like velocity, so we can relate it with kinetic energy next. Next, next, next. Simple one, only two things are there, either kinetic and second one is the spring, isn't it? Are you getting my point? Yes. But in this question, surprisingly, you don't have to equate the kinetic energy and the spring energy. Why? Because the kinetic energy and the spring energy are not interrelated. They are not like exchanging their energies. They both are getting the energies from the force that has been provided. Say yes or no. Yes, sir. It is not like that key kinetic energy is giving the uh, energy to uh, decreasing itself and then giving it, uh, its energy to the spring energy or vice versa. But the thing is that the force, the 10 Newton force is there. That is the reason of change in spring energy or kinetic energy. So whatever work done is there by the force that will be equal to the spring energy. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So this is what you have to do here. Now think and try to solve this. I'll be giving you two, three minutes. I gave you the hint, try to solve this. Is it one meter per second? Pardon? One meter per second. One meter per second is the correct answer. Good. Good, Arvind. We'll be waiting for more answers.
Anyone else getting the same answer? Are you solving? Or shall I start doing it? At least reply. How would I know? Okay, everyone look at here. So the condition is this 10 Newton force is doing some work and that is changing the kinetic energy and that is also changing the spring energy. So work done by this force, work done by 10 Newton force, that will equal to delta kinetic energy of that body plus delta spring energy or that is also called a potential energy. Okay, so work done, what is the work done by this 10 Newton force, Arvind? What did you write for this work done of 10 Newton force? So 10 into 0 0.5. Exactly. 10 force and in the same direction, the displacement occurred for 0 0.5 meters, right? So it will be 10 into 0 0.5 into cos of 0. Kinetic energy that we don't know half into mass is 4 and V square. That V square how much has been attained that we don't know. And since it has moved for 0 0.5 meters, so spring energy is half K is 24 and that X that the displacement is 0 0.5 itself. So when you will equate this, you will get the velocity as 1 meter per second. Everyone understood or not? Tell me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone. everyone. Yes, sir. Ashwin, Ananya, Ritika, yes, Pata, sir. getting answers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Good. Okay, let us move on to the next question. Next question. I need to take a screenshot of it because this is quite big. One minute. See, physics and math is all about solving questions. Whatever you have learned, if you have not solved questions based on those principles, you know nothing. Because you can see that boards exam or it, it be IIT exam or NEET exam has been conducted every year. Is being conducted every year and no questions are repeated. None of the questions are repeated. So same theory, same theory is there. Give me one minute. Right. So same theory is there, but the questions are still not repeated. Isn't it? So they can create a new questions every year. Okay. Try to solve this question. Uh, okay. Figure is required. I'm drawing the figure. Figure is like this. So we have a block here. Big block. Okay. This is C. A smaller block is here. This is B. Right? Connected to a spring. See, all these things seems to be hard. But when you apply with the basics, it become very easy. And this is the lower block A. Huh. Now try to solve this question. Try to solve this question.
சார் ஐ கேன் கெட் டில் ஹாஃப் ஜாப் பட் ஐ can get till half of the problem but i can't do it at all um what did you do sir first i took uh, mass of a into gravity equal to uh, the k into x mm mm-hmm. then i got uh, x value then okay. the value is 0.01 meter okay then i multiplied uh, mass of b into g uh, but into the coefficient of friction you're going correct try to think a bit more i don't want to give you more it it is equal to the tension i don't know what you are uh you are 90% correct that's correct but you should have uh, solved for tension earlier itself i'll tell you we'll wait for one more minute for everyone to do and then we'll start with the solutions one more minute oh sir the tension is equal to kx yes exactly so we equal to mass of a செகண்ட் பார்ட் that means you are solving that's good So, yeah, come here. Energy, it's zero point zero nine eight joules. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now I'll be solving it. Very good. See here, everyone. So basically, uh, tension is being acted here. This tension is the force that is stretching the um, this uh, your uh, what do you say that spring. okay basically the tension is the force that is stretching the spring and that is there due to this weight since a has got 2 kg weight so it will be 2 into g acceleration due to gravity okay that will be the force that is the weight exactly 2 kg is the mass right so if i write the equation for block a if i write the equation for block a what it will be it will be a uh, tension is equals to 2g right and for block b it will be t is equals to tension is equals to friction that will be equals to mu times n because what is happening here the movement has been stopped so tension is equals to whatever the friction has been applied at the back side agree or not everyone yes or no right or wrong yes sir everyone right yes sir vandana understood chitesh yes sir raghav rohit yes sir good yes sir so it will be please answer the how would i know that you know this so it will be mu times mg m of b only because whatever the normal reaction here will be created that will be equals to the weight of block b and g right you have studied this in the previous chapter so here tension 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 from here we get to know that it is 2g so 2g is equals to mu times what is mu mu value is 0.2 what is m that we don't know and g is g only so gg cancels so mb will be what 2 by 0.2 or 10 kg first part is clear everyone say yes or no 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Now, this is for the second part. Second part says that you have to calculate the um, energy stored in the spring. So, energy stored in the spring is what? U is equal to half kx square. So, for that, we need this x displacement. Who is producing the force in the spring? So, tension is producing the force in the spring. And what is the force in the spring equals to? That is k into x. Tension, we know that is uh, 2 into g. If we take g as 10, so that will be k. What is the value of k there? Okay. See here, in this question, the k value is 1960. So you should understand from here that when you take G value as 9.8, that will be better because that will be easily cancelable. So 1960 times X, Y. So 2 into 9.8, it is 19.6. See here, 19.6 is 1960 into X. So X will be what? 0 0.1 meters. Yes or no? So you will be half into 1960 into, so it will be 0 0.01 into 0 0.01 whole square, that will be 0 0.098 joules. Did you understand it, everyone? Please reply. Yes, sir. Okay. Everyone? Yes, sir. Rest did not understand? I need the confirmation, then I'll be moving forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You guys are really shy. Return, shall I move forward? Have you written this? Yes, sir. All right. So the next question. Um, next question, next question. Um, 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 okay. Question says that the string of the pendulum, the string of the pendulum, okay, is two meter long, is two meter long. The bob is pulled sideways. The bob is pulled sideways so that the string becomes horizontal. So that the string becomes horizontal. Okay. Then bob is released. Then Bob is released, right? What is the speed at which, what is the speed at which? Speed at which Bob arrives at the lowest point. Bob arrives at the lowest point. Lowest point. Okay, one more condition is there. Assume, assume that 10% energy is lost, is lost due to, against air resistance. Against air resistance. Now try to solve this. I'll try to solve this. <clears throat> this. Statement is very much informative. All these are questions that has already occurred in board. We should solve this.
सर इज इट सिक्स मीटर पर सेकेंड Very easy. I am not having more answers. Uh, six meter per second. You are getting it. Yes, sir. Good. Rohit, where are you? I'm getting it, sir. Why not telling it then? Sorry, sir. No problem. No need to say sorry. Arvind, Ashwin, Chitesh. Yes, sir. Getting the same answer. One minute, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Okay, see there the solution. So according to this condition, the spring of the bob pendulum, for example, let us say that we have a bob attached like this. So it has been first made straight, okay, horizontal straight, and this length is two meters. So when it will be allowed to fall, it will be swing like it will be swinging like this. It will be two meter also, right? So we just have to balance the potential energy and kinetic energy. We'll be taking this as base. So initially it has positive potential energy and zero kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is zero, right? Here it has kinetic energy, but potential energy is zero because no height is there. So, right? So here, if we can write it like this, mg into h is two meter. Here we can write it like this. If it has gained the velocity v, so it will be half m v square only. Okay. But in through process, in through process, from here to here, 10% is lost as 10% energy dissipated. 10% energy is dissipated. So, uh, if you can say that, mg into 2, 90% of it has been converted into half mv square. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So, this mm gets cancelled. If you calculate this, V is root under 90 by 100 into 2 into G, we'll get a 6 meter per second. That is the answer. Right? Everyone has done the same thing? Or got the answers? Yes, sir. Okay. Shall we move on to the next question? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, see. So the same type of question, but little bit different concept. A girl, a girl of mass 40 kg sits in the swing, sits in the swing, right? Formed by a rope. Formed by a rope. Of six meter length. 
of six meter length. A person pulls the swing. A person pulls the swing to a side so that to a side so that the rope makes an angle of the rope makes an angle of 60 degree with the vertical 60 degree with the vertical what is the gain in what is the gain in potential energy of the girl try to solve this little bit same concept Is it done? One minute, sir. Sir, thousand two hundred. Thousand two hundred. Let me see. Um, nearly, but gap is more. Sir, I took the value as 10 instead of 9.8, sir. Hmm. Sir, I got I, one uh, more. How much? 1,176. One, 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 7,6. 7,6. That is the exact answer. Sir, is it due to the G value? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I took it as 10. Okay, this much value difference will occur. Okay, let us see the answer then. 
So answer is like initially the condition was like this. Finally, it has to swing it down. So the angle made was 60 degrees. Earlier it was horizontal and the 60 degree angle is there. So what is the relative difference in height that you have to calculate first? So this is the relative difference in height. How will we be calculating it? So let us say that if this is R value, so this whole will be R only because radius is constant. So if I take cos theta here, cos of 60 degree will be what? This is base. So that will be B upon R if I'm not wrong. So B will be R cos 60 degree. So it will be R by 2. Right? Everyone? Yes, sir. Right? So what is H? H is nothing but R minus B. It is R minus R by 2. It is R by 2 only. So the relative difference in height is only R by 2. Right? What is R? What is the radius given? 6 meter radius is given. So H is 6 by 2. That is 3 meters. So relative difference half mv square. Is equals to uh, we have just asked that potential energy now. So potential energy will be it will be P is equals to MGH only. That will be M is 40 kgs, G is 9.8, and uh, H will be 3 meters. Whenever you answer anything like in case of options and you do not get the answer, always try to switch to 9.8 immediately. So you'll get 1176 because 1176 and 1200 is a huge difference. Right? Okay then, so this is all for today. We'll be joining, uh, we have the maths class now, right right away? Yes, sir. So we'll be joining at 6.50, exactly. Be there, by till then. And keep Thank solving, you, please. Keep, keep, keep solving. Because if you keep solving, you'll be having the concept in physics grip in your hand, and that is most important. All right? Yes, sir. Okay, all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.